I'm due for a size like event. You're dancing on the fault line. Hey, what is your problem, pal? I got no beef with you. This is between me and the kid. He started it. This morning, we got to the studio and we are hit immediately with a press conference from Ron DeSantis. As Ron DeSantis like comes out, there was I'm like I'm like texting my producers. We have people who work for Ron DeSantis who's on, who are on staff with us. It's like where did this come from? Just out of nowhere, there's a press conference uh, with the governor and with the attorney general talking about the investigation into Donald Trump and the shooter who wished to murder Donald Trump on Florida, uh, in, inside of the state of Florida. Therefore, it's Florida's jurisdiction. The reason why this is important is because we argued uh, in the minutes, truly the minutes, it hadn't even been an hour, uh, and the assassination attempt broke on Sunday. We had the right instinct. We were live. We thank you for watching. If you were, we had Eric Prince on, and Eric Prince said, DeSantis, you got to do this thing. You got to go and you got to make this your state investigation. He's, he's your prisoner. And so you've got to get the information uh, before any feds can come in and scrub it or bury it like we've seen so many times, whether it's Russiagate with Robert Mueller, Donald Trump, all this was launched actually by the feds, uh, whether it's the shooter in Pennsylvania, where we just still don't know anything about him. Well, we'll never know. We'll never know his true motives. You've got the clip here. This thing went pretty, pretty viral. This is the power of the audience. It's got millions of views. It's got 12,000 reposts, 45,000 likes. So the, 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 the point for us is to make sure that uh, the politicians that listen to us watch the show, or maybe are just scared of the show, that they, that they are doing the right thing. And, and, and Ron DeSantis starting his own investigation, since he has every right to read the 10th Amendment, he has every right, and this crime was committed on Florida, inside of the state of Florida, Ron DeSantis should say, no, he's mine. And assert that state power over the feds. And Ron DeSantis did that this morning uh, without announcing his press conference. And so we probably would have been live if we had known about it ahead of time. But here we go. Ron DeSantis comes out uh, just suddenly live this morning saying, we are making this a state criminal case. And we are going to get our bite of the apple, as it were. And we're going to be releasing all that information to the public before it can be scrubbed by the feds or buried by the feds. Again, do we We don't know anything about Thomas Crooks. Nothing. We know nothing. What was his motivations? Who was he speaking with? Who was he talking to? All of it has literally been scrubbed by the FBI. You could see the images of them literally power washing the blood off the roof cremating the body or allowing the body to be releasing the body for cremation. That's destruction of evidence. This is an ongoing criminal investigation. So many circumstances there. So we're so glad that Ron DeSantis uh, came out and said this this morning. Today, I'm signing an executive order assigning the case involving the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump to the office of statewide prosecutor under the supervision of Attorney General Ashley Moody. The suspect, Ryan Routh, is believed to have committed state law violations across multiple judicial circuits in this state. Palm Beach Judicial Circuit, the judicial circuit including Martin County, as well as perhaps the judicial circuit represented by Broward County. Also, the state of Florida has jurisdiction over the most serious straightforward offense, which is attempted murder. I've directed state agencies to move expeditiously and to provide full transparency to the public. In my judgment, it's not in the best interest of our state or our nation to have the same federal agencies that are seeking to prosecute Donald Trump leading this investigation, especially when the most serious straightforward offense constitutes a violation of state law, but not federal law. In addition to holding the suspect accountable, the public deserves to know the truth about how this assassination came to be. And I have directed all state agencies to work expeditiously to be able to uncover the truth in addition to holding this suspect accountable. Uh, we are going to hear from some folks that will be involved in this, starting with our Attorney General, Ashley Moody. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Governor. Thank you for all who are joining us today. I'm Ashley Moody. I'm the Attorney General of the great state of Florida. Really proud, as always, to stand with a leader like Governor DeSantis, who always appears to meet the moment, uh, whatever that may be, whatever challenge may be upon us. And he's certainly not one to sit on his hands. And today is another demonstration of that incredible leadership characteristic. You know, I think America right now is, and Florida citizens are very hungry for leadership. This is unprecedented to have um, this much focus on a presidential nominee uh, with the type of rhetoric and threats coming out of the mouths of so many people. And I will just say, it was really disappointing to hear the president say that President Trump should be put in a bullseye just days before we saw the first assassination attempt. And then weeks later at the DNC say that that threat was still very much alive. And now again, in under 30 days, another assassination attempt. And so what I think people are hungry for is leadership. They don't want somebody to come out and say, Secret Service needs to tell us what they need and Congress should do something about it. It may very well be that resources need to be, more resources need to be dedicated to Secret Service. But leadership is about strategy. It's about implementing a plan. It's about determining where your gaps are, your deficiencies, and filling those in. I mean, look no further than our governor when we were hit by a major catastrophe like Ian, a hurricane, and he didn't say, Somebody give them money. And he didn't say, you do this. He built a bridge in three days. He got it done. I told him that's what he should have ran, for, ran on when he ran for re-election. That was it. The motto should have been a bridge in three days. And so what we need is the president to acknowledge that these agencies, not just Secret Service, but DHS, in which it is housed, are under his purview. That is what the people elected him to be, our commander in chief and the head of an executive branch, which is made up of agencies. And that means when something happens and goes wrong, you are in the details and you are formulating a plan. And it may not always be just about money. It's about leadership. And right now, the American people need to know we're on this. Sometimes states have the ability and the jurisdiction to bring charges and go after maximum penalties that maybe the federal government does not. And that doesn't mean it's a turf war. Somebody asked me about that before. It is very common for state investigators, state prosecutors to work with our federal prosecutors and federal agents on dual tracks with different purposes. And we may have different charges here, and that's why uh, with Governor DeSantis' leadership, I am proud that Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the Florida Highway Patrol will be looking into and investigating what happened when something went terribly wrong, when someone was allowed to remain on the periphery of a golf course in a tree line for 12 hours and get within 500 feet of the President of the United States. We also need trust and transparency. And that's why I'm very proud of the state of Florida for stepping up and this governor for stepping up and delivering that to Floridians and the American people. It is awkward, to say the least, to have a prosecutorial agency and an investigatory agency that is bringing charges and seeking to put the victim away for life, being the same agency and prosecutors that are going after the would-be assassin. And so we're happy to make sure that the American people and Floridians feel confident that we're protecting one of our own, that we're investigating this to leave no stone unturned, and that is to protect the life of the once and potentially future President of the United States, Donald Trump. So thank you, Governor DeSantis, for trusting us and our agencies with this important work. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is, uh, again, something that went live without us knowing it was going to happen at 9 a.m., uh, again, we we communicate with the with Governor DeSantis' team with regularity, and we didn't even we didn't know this. So they just like went we just went live this morning, and we were it was wonderful to hear this. I had to tell you, man, um, this is a law and order state, dude. 
I, I, we live here. It's the reason why I moved my family here from the hellscape that was Washington, D.C. You know, you move to D.C. Ten, for 10 years, you, you know, work in journalism. I worked for Andrew Breitbart, worked for a lot of wonderful, or, uh, you know, journalistic organizations. Glenn Beck, The Blaze. I was work. you know, you got to live in D.C. But eventually you just break and you're like, I need to have law and order. And I need to have a, a system of government that is designed uh, around protecting people who follow the law and prosecuting the people who don't. And so it's like very it's wonderful to hear DeSantis be like, we can bring charges the feds can't because he committed state crimes uh, here that the feds can't charge. That's how it works. So we're the people who are actually actually put the gears and put the teeth to this guy. Have you ever seen anything like that in Pennsylvania? And it gets the blood going, really. It makes me think I've really chose my state correctly because you haven't once seen Josh Shapiro, those little sniveling rats that run Pennsylvania, these people, they're totally illegitimate. And these monsters have never once had a press conference about the murder that took place in Pennsylvania. Corey Comprator died. He was shot to death by a left winger who tried to murder people at a MAGA rally, including but not limited to President Trump. And yet I've heard nothing, radio silence from the Democrats around Pennsylvania, which leads you to believe that actually they don't want to bring attention to this, or maybe they just don't care. Maybe they don't care enough. So it's a, it's a, a wonderful thing to see. And also Ashley Moody there, who's <laughs> who's our neighbor here in Tampa. Ashley Moody is the attorney general of the state of Florida, making a very clear and very good point. Yo, um, they're trying to put Trump in jail. I think that's strange. The FBI is trying to put Trump in jail. Jesus raided Mar-a-Lago. You want to know those criminals, Mar-a-Lago. Uh, why don't we start with the people who raided Mar-a-Lago? By the way, with a kill order. Everybody forgot about that? You know, the FBI like went in guns a-blazing, guns drawn with a kill order to Mar-a-Lago. Not too long ago, just a couple of years, just a year or two ago. So uh, who are the people who are like dangerous in this property and in this area who are trying who are trying to like, wh why would you have a kill order at Mar-a-Lago? Answer that. Oh, it's normal process. Well, this isn't normal. You're raiding the president's house. Why would you have a kill order? Donald Trump's protected by Secret Service. You were trying to create a blue on blue havoc situation where people got hurt. We know that's what you were trying to do, you sick monsters. And so good on them. Good on the state of Florida. Being like, no, F you. You're trying to put Trump in jail. You were the ones trying to like raid his house with guns drawn, trying to create a dangerous situation for him and his family. You raided Baron Trump's room, Melania Trump's boudoir, rummaged through Melania Trump's unmentionables, and then staged photos and planted evidence. So no, we don't trust you to do a thorough investigation. The FBI agent in charge, his name's Jeffrey Veltri, the guy in charge had to go through and delete all of his anti-Trump posts. This guy was like a seething anti-Trump. This is a vicious anti-Trump hater. He was forced by Christopher Wray to go delete all of his posts. I still kept his job. And now he's the guy in charge of, like, he's the guy in charge of finding the truth. <laughs> Oh, okay. Secret Service agent, yes, Secret Service Director R Ronald Rowe yesterday, was patting himself on the back, talking, bragging about himself. Sir, uh, Director Lunkhead, we call him, patting himself on the back. It was a great job he did. The shooter camped out for 12 hours. He was known to the FBI. He, The FBI got a tip in 2019 that the shooter was a felon, he is, and had firearms, he did, and then he used those firearms to try and murder Trump while camping out at his club for 12 hours. You know, a, a drone, these are very, we have drones. We have a number of drones. These are good, you know, these are very, they're common object. These are not particularly expensive. And you could just fly a drone there with infrared and you could see anybody hiding in the bushes. You are aware of that, right? Like no matter how bad, no matter how camouflaged you are, you're not going to camouflage the fact that you're a human being and you're, you're warm blooded, okay? Unless it was Hillary Clinton hiding in the the, wood, the weeds, then it would be like lizard person. Why God? Who is this? What's this cold body? It's a cold blooded lizard. We don't know. It's a huge iguana. We've never seen anything this big. 
Oh my God, it's running. It's running for president again, hopefully. Uh, so there you go. We were like, got, uh, nobody should be proud of themselves in this situation. I'm very proud of the state of Florida taking this over. Okay, so Ron DeSantis uh, took some questions from the press. Why is this necessary? You can imagine what he, what, what the, the questions. These are This is Ron DeSantis. This is peak Ron DeSantis. This is where he's at his best, a- explaining to smooth brains in the media um, how how they are corrupt emissaries and bootlickers and that th- this stuff doesn't fly in the state of Florida. Go. Well, it's not a question of casting doubt, but I'm, I'm going to answer you. So Well, for a couple of reasons. One, the federal government does not have jurisdiction to bring an attempted murder charge. If you look at the federal statute, it applies to current federal officials. And, and, and uh, well, okay, so I'm, I'm explaining to you why, why that's happening. If you let me finish. So they don't have jurisdiction over uh, a, a case that's not a federal official or is a apparent winner of a presidential election or the, the formally declared president elect. So right then and there, we have the ability to pursue potentially life in prison under state law. That's a huge reason why we should move forward at the state level uh, than that. Uh, And it is the case that you have a situation where these charges that were brought in this jurisdiction, Southern District of Florida, by the federal government, they were dismissed by a federal judge, and now they're on appeal trying to get those reinstated. And they have a right to do that. But I would note to you, it was Merrick Garland who assigned a a special counsel because he said there was a political uh, issue and they wanted to appear to be above it. He was the one that did that. Uh, There really was no true conflict. If these were normal crimes, you could have done it. But they did a special counsel. And so if you did a special counsel for that, wouldn't those same concerns animate whether you're the appropriate jurisdiction so they cannot pursue charges to the extent we can. Uh, And yes, I do think that there's a lot of concern um, about how these agencies have operated. And the state of Florida, I mean, you know, for us, all we're interested is the truth. Uh, We're not involved in any of those uh, of those other things that the Justice Department or FBI have been involved in. So it's better for the public uh, and it's better for justice. Next. Yes, sir. Well, that's what the investigation, I think, will show. Um, You know, some people say, well, how would he have known to be there? But I think those of you who've covered the the former president, when he is at Mar-a-Lago on the weekends, that is the number one place he goes. So it isn't like this was like a one in a million chance. On the other hand, um, this guy went uh, at night, and it was not on any schedule that this was going to happen. It was more of a last-minute thing. And I don't even know that the club is open yet. Uh, I think they open in October. Um, I know, in fact, I was talking with them um, uh, a week or two ago. They did a lot of overseeding. I think the course is going to be in really good shape. And he's like, you got to come down and see it. Uh, and so, but I don't think it's even open for the members yet. So why would he have chosen now to burrow in to that? I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, our folks are going to look to see. And here's the thing. I'm not interested in trying to, like, blame this person or that person. It's, okay, let's just get the facts. Let's put it out for the public. Let's figure out what, I mean, this guy, I mean, you look at his rap sheet. You look at the things he's been involved in. Uh, this, is, this guy had red flags. I know he's been looked at by federal law enforcement. Uh, how the heck did it end up where he's in West Palm Beach uh, in those bushes? And, and that's apart from the prosecution. People deserve the truth about that. They need to know his associations. They need to know his motivations, his ideology. And uh, our guys are doing it. In fact, as soon as this happened, uh, when I said investigate, I said save the social media because what they do, Facebook will take it down uh, and try to hide it. They, FDLE saved all the social media um, and they've been doing that type of research. So I think it's, um, I think it needs to be done. But that's my, I'm not, I have no preconceived notions on this. They're going to do it, but they're going to do a thorough job and I think produce answers that people have confidence in. Yes. Have you spoken to the former president's I have. 
So he, one, he was in good spirits. Um, he did remark that, uh, you know, I th on that sixth hole, I think he was in pretty good shape for a potential birdie. And if you know the former president, that matters a lot to him when you're talking about uh, this. And, and I, I mean, I told him uh, a couple weeks ago, I said, the number one thing I got from the Biden debate was people said, you know, you were very reserved, except when Biden claimed he had a six handicap. Then you just wouldn't accept that because you knew it wasn't true. And it isn't true. Um, so he was in good spirits. But... Um, you know, he was a complimentary of the state of Florida taking the lead. Uh, he thought that was totally appropriate, and he encouraged us to continue doing uh, what we're doing. So, yeah, I was clearly we have an interest in doing this apart from anything else. Uh, but but it was it was great that, that he sees uh, the need for what we're doing and that we're going to move forward. Just a reminder that Ron DeSantis was a JAG lawyer and worked for the Navy and knows in and out. I believe he went to Yale. Is this correct? Make sure that I'm right on that. Uh, don't mess. Don't, like, don't F, don't F around. Like, F around and find out on these legal issues. Yeah, okay. So he did. So F around and find out on these legal issues. DeSantis is very, very, very rock solid on this. And the feds can't charge attempted murder here. And also the breakdown of, you know, you're, you're appointing special prosecutors against this guy in order to politically persecute him in our state. And now there's a crime in our state where he was nearly murdered. So you're attempting a political assassination of Trump. And now there's a physical assassination of Trump. And we're not going to let you get away with it. I love that DeSantis and his team was smart enough to say, capture all of his social media. And so he directed the law enforcement agencies here in Florida who are all aligned. They're part of the press conference. This press conference was over an hour, so we're not going to play all of it. They, they were... Uh, the, Agencies that are involved in law enforcement and cyber here in the state of Florida that has a very sophisticated, I mean, there's a lot of people moving here. There's a lot of a lot of wealth, a lot of uh, energy moving here. There's a reason why the world's billionaires are moving to Florida. Uh, there's a lot of uh, security, safety, and a, a sophisticated law enforcement apparatus uh, run here by the state that gives people a lot of confidence to move their treasure into the state. And DeSantis says, we saved his social media. We have everything. You can't effing lie about this guy. You're not going to be allowed to go walk into Congress and say, Thomas Crooks was a Republican. This is what they did. And they walked in and said, Thomas Crooks was a Republican shooting Trump. We may never know. Well, DeSantis just like throwing down the gauntlet saying, we saved it all. Before they go and delete it, we saved it all. So they have it. So it's all been our, it's great. Our team also has quite, quite a bit. Uh, and sure enough, they did delete it. Boom. Like that. As soon as uh, it became public. It's amazing uh, what you learn about this guy. You learn he's a Democrat donor. He voted in Democrat elections that he lived in Hawaii, yet he voted in North Carolina. He's a felon. How's he even voting? How's he buying firearms? Where's he getting the gun? The gun had an obliterated serial number. The FBI was supposed to investigate this guy for being a felon and owning a firearm. If he was a felon and he did own a firearm and tried to kill Trump with that firearm. And the FBI said, it's too hard. We can't do it. Better go knock on the doors of Catholic churches more. Better go arrest more grannies for protesting abortion. I am so glad that the state is doing this. Ron Sanders has one, had one more spectacular point during a Q&A. You got to hear it about what the federal government is doing in persecuting and prosecuting Trump and why it's so important to have an independent investigation go. So here's the issue. They are trying to prosecute him in the Southern District of Florida. That's just a fact. So just think about that. You have an agency. They're, they're prosecuting him in two different jurisdictions right now. They're prosecuting him in Southern Florida. That's on appeal to the 11th Circuit. They're also prosecuting in the District of Columbia uh, for the January 6th stuff. So these are two major cases that these agencies are involved with. And so the question is, uh, given that, and there's a lot of people who have a lot of issues with those prosecutions. I mean, as you well know, it's not like these are prosecutions that the American people have rallied behind. It has divided this country in big ways. And so the question is, you have those prosecutions. Do we honestly think this agency, these agencies are the best to turn around and do uh, this investigation on a potential uh, assassin? 
uh, that, that some of them may or may, or may not um, uh, be, want to be held accountable for if there was something they could have done better, right, with security. I don't, I, I don't know what all went into their, the federal stuff. But man, don't you want a clean slate? Don't you want to have investigative agencies that are just going to pursue this without any other agenda creeping in, without there being any cause for concern about any impartiality? And oh, by the way, that can bring the most serious, readily provable offense under state law, not under federal law. So, so this is the right thing to do uh, for, for justice. And I think justice means holding the perpetrator accountable to the full extent of the law, but justice also means making sure we get the unvarnished truth. We haven't gotten the unvarnished truth about Butler, Pennsylvania. That's just a fact. We never got really any truth about Las Vegas uh, when that happened. And so I think people are used to kind of the federal agencies taking control of things and then no answers happening. Uh, and we don't want that to happen in this case. That's not appropriate to happen in this case, especially when the state of Florida has multiple grounds with which to pursue charges against this individual. I think what will, um, well, what will reveal, I think, is the important thing. What the state does is going to be made public. I mean, if you guys know who are from Florida, you can FOIA a lot of, of, of the stuff that's done in these investigations under Florida Sunshine Laws, and then they have a charge to be very frank and exercise candor with the public. Uh, I want the information to get out. I do not want any of the information uh, kept under wraps. We, we're not a party to anything that happened in terms of the state, state of Florida government. I mean, we have been asked to help in the past on security, and we're always willing to do that. But that wasn't our primary. We were not uh, responsible for it that day. Um, we've not been responsible for any of the prosecutions that have been brought against the former president. So we're in a great, great situation to be able to look at this with clear eyes, uh, get answers, and then deliver those answers to the public. Um, I don't think anyone can honestly claim that the federal government has been forthright and transparent about its past investigations. That's just the reality. That's just how these guys operate. Apart from any type of political bias, that's how it's been uh, really for many, many years. That's not how it's going to be here. Uh, and so we'll, we'll cooperate with, with all agency or all levels of government because I think that some of those gun charges may be appropriate to bring, but not to the exclusion of bringing a charge for something like attempted murder. Wow. I am blown away. I was extremely we mute my mic for these exact reasons. I screamed in the studio. I just screamed. I can't believe he brought up Vegas. DeSantis just brought up Las Vegas. The largest mass shooting in American history. And we know nothing. Nothing. When the federal government. Hides. Information from the public. Then by its very nature. What it is in doing is engaging in a conspiratorial cover-up to try and deceive us, to try and lie to you. There are so many questions about Vegas. We do not have enough time to get into it. There's so many strange occurrences that happen around that Vegas shooting, and people deserve justice. They deserve to know. There are dozens of people who died there. I don't know the exact number. 55 is the number that's coming into my head, but there are dozens of people who died. And those families like, deserve closure. What the hell happened exactly? When was the last time you had the feds come out and say, oh, this is the largest mass shooting in American history. We know there's so many strange occurrences that uh, are surrounding it. We're going to be clear and concise and give you all of the evidence, and you're going to see everything. You're going to see everything, every object, every firearm, every bullet. You're going to see it all. And we're going to try and close the door on what actually happened here. Nope. Nothing. What was the last time the feds did a, uh, what was the last time the feds did a, uh, hey, hey, media, come on in, bring all your cameras in. And we're going to tell you everything we know about Butler. Here's the dude's cell phone. Here we cracked the case. Here's how everyone he was talking to. Here's all the foreign countries he was engaging with. Here's what he was saying on Gab and all these other alternative social media platforms. What was the last time they did it? And this is what we know. And these are the hard facts, ma'am. Just to clear it all up for you. By not doing that, what the federal government does is necessitate independent investigation and people who are asking real questions, 